Nickel, nickel, nine. Yeah. Uh, five, nine, J. Uh, uh, let me speak my mind up. Uh, uh, it's just me keeping it real. Uh huh. Keeping it 100. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Yeah, we got a little bit of breaking news when it comes to the boys on the other side of that border, right? First, everybody told me about the arrest, the arrest of Yvonne Guzman, the youngest one that has like a $14 million reward. $14 million reward in Mexico. They were Everybody was hitting me up saying the last of El Chapo's sons were busted. So I did a little digging. Yes, there was a raid by, you know, Mexican soldiers. They had a shootout with the Mexican drug cartels. A lot of roadblocks were done. Bombs were going at it. Basically, cartel members going at it with the soldiers and the Mexican government and Mexican officials. Big old shootout. Vehicles were on fire. You name it. But... You know, it was just rumors and speculations at that point. No arrests were made at that time when all the news hit, hit the media. But just recently, you know, Mexican officials in the news media, because one news media immediately ran to the coverage and said, they got Yvonne. They arrested Yvonne. This is what this is what the situation was looking like. This is what happened. This is how the Mexican officials located him and invaded him. And, you know, it was a big old brawl, big old shootout, but they got him. It was a big media in Mexico that announced it. But just recently... Another news media denied it right afterwards. And I don't know if there's like news media is just clashing heads when it comes to information because you know that's how it really works. But they're actually denied that no arrests were even made. Yeah, there was a shootout. Yeah, a lot of people died. Yeah, some buses were set on fire and some vehicles were set on fire and some, I don't know, they're probably throwing bombs. You know, some Call of Duty type stuff was going on. But they denied it saying no arrests have been made of the youngest son who's happened to be one of the biggest leaders of the Sinaloa cartel right now as we speak. But on another note, do you know that they they went after Yvonne on the basis that the other Chapitos are, are incarcerated, well, were incarcerated? They really, the government pretty much made it a point down there to say, we're going after Yvonne, Los Chapitos, on the basis that they kidnapped El Mayo and took him to U.S. soil. That's the basis. So they had information on Los Chapitos, how to target them because they targeted them before and placed Ovidio in you know, U.S. custody. They're OK with that. They always have information on these cartel bosses. It's just a matter of when they want to bust these guys. Right. So they'll allow these guys to get away with so much until they need something on record to look good for their you know, official business, their politicianal business. So they know about Yvonne. They know Yvonne's location. They went after him on the basis that. You know, those Chapitos turned in El Mayo. So that made me sit there and think. They're really mad and want to press charges against one of the younger brothers for kidnapping charges, for kidnapping El Mayo and transferring him on a plane and taking him to Texas where he got arrested by the DEA. We all know that that Chapito worked out a deal and El Mayo was just surprised. Like, look, man, I got I got leverage right now. I can renegotiate all our terms because look who I brought you. This guy right here. This is the guy you guys been looking for, right? This one right here? Yeah, I got you. So let's go ahead and pull up a chair at the table and let's renegotiate, you know, my surrender and get a better deal because I just got you the most wanted man that's been wanted for 37 years. But the Mexican officials are like, why the hell did you do that? You just no. So now they're going to go after Los Chapitos. And that's what made me believe that a lot of these Mexican politicians, Mexican government, Mexican officials are in pocket with a lot of big dudes, especially one of the biggest drug kingpins, drug lords in Mexico, that they got so mad, irritated, and decided to target back and retaliate because they kidnapped El Mayo and brought him to the U.S. soil. That just goes to show you how Mexican officials are corrupt. That's why I don't really like raise an eyebrow when people bring up you know, people coming across that border. Back then, for a long time, I always just heard about people crossing that border that were Mexicanos. Trying to leave all the drug wars and violence that's going on. Nobody wants to die for no reason. But, you know, that's what happens on that country. So, it's crazy though, because a part of that a part of that whole escapade that happened with El Mayo, he had two bodyguards. Two, He always had two bodyguards. One of them was a police officer at all times. So when they got old boy on that plane and they uh, bamboozled him to believing that he was going to go check out some property, he had a police officer that was a bodyguard and 
he came up missing, kidnapped, and was found killed. So, in order to work out a deal with the DEA, he happened to kill two bodyguards in the event to capture El Mayo and take him to the DEA. The DEA didn't reason they, they, that didn't bother the DEA whatsoever. That people were killed along the line in order to capture El Mayo and transfer him to the U.S. so he could be persecuted in the United States. So the United States wants all these drug kingpins arrested, extradited to the United States, no matter the cost, no matter the repercussions, even if people die in the process. As long as they're able to put handcuffs on these men, I think they're content with that. And Mexican officials, the Mexican government, Mexican police, Mexican district attorneys are making that a big deal about it. Like, man, people died in the event that he was captured. So now they got to answer for two bodyguards. One bodyguard who happened to be a, a drug cartel hitman. And the other one was a corrupted police officer. They're making a big deal about the police officer getting gunned down, kidnapped, and murdered. But yet he was on the payroll of El Mayo. But he still killed a police officer. Crazy corrupted politics, if you ask me. Now, mind you, I don't know why the news media would go right afterwards and say Yvonne wasn't arrested. There's some media saying that he was arrested, and there's some media saying he wasn't. Now, that is a very dangerous but confusing ball game that they're playing out there. It's like they don't want him. It's like they don't want you to know that he got arrested. Maybe they're trying to cover it up, make sure he doesn't get extradited, so they can keep him in power and keep that money coming over there. Because if he's actually arrested, and the need and the United States sticks their nose in it. Then he might end up in the United States, and then where's who, who's getting paid? What well, politicians in Mexico are really going to get paid, right? So one of the young brothers turns in Almayo, makes a deal. The deal was on the basis to get his older brother out of the BOP, out of federal prison. And sure enough, this man right here just got announced by the DEA. I don't know why the DA would leak this information when the, the case is confidential. It's under seal. He went to the witness protection program. The witness protection program, you, you guys already know what that is. You know, big guys that are saying big names about big people and big events and big organizations. And, you know, obviously law enforcement and the government love to protect these kind of people. And we've heard many, many, many stories when it comes to, you know, regular organizations, Italian mafia organizations, Chinese mafia organizations. There's all kinds of people in that witness protection program that turned on their organization and told to get better deals the cartel ain't no different see we watch all these news medias and see the violence that's what we're always going to be shown and displayed in front of our eyes is the level of violence everything that's going on from these street grunts to these big bosses that's all we're ever going to see and that's what everybody's so scared of man you go to mexico man they're going to cut your head off they're going to dismember your body parts they're going to kick your head like a soccer ball then they're going to violate your women and your kids of course of course when you got corrupted police officers that will turn a blind eye when you got district attorneys who are not well funded by their own government because their own government's pocketing all the money that they can to prosecute these guys and yet these cartels got billions and billions and billions of dollars so they're buying some of the best weaponry known to mankind they can fight off militaries all for 250 american dollars a week these guys will go to war with police officers and the army and kill people for it so it makes it kind of hard to combat the mexican drug cartels in mexico i get it and the reason why i say billions and billions of dollars is because the the whole arraignment and uh, trial that's going on with El Mayo, part of that document, it's not about how much fentanyl he brought in, how much drugs he uh, brought across the United States or he shipped to the United States, how many of the, all the 100,000 uh, overdoses that he's responsible for for some reason. I don't know where they got that statistic. I don't know why they blame a specific 100,000 people of fentanyl overdose on El Mayo when those Chapitos were doing the same thing. They blamed him for 100,000 overdoses in the United States, murders, tra uh, racketeering, drug charges. All this is he's facing. So he's going he's gonna to share a cell just like El Chapo. Maybe, maybe not. I say that because I'm about to give you some information. But in this court proceeding, in the transcripts, in the paperwork, the United States wants to confiscate $14 billion dollars that he has that he's in possession of he probably has in shell corporations you know businesses bank accounts accounts that you know the united states has no jurisdiction of freezing 
they want $14 billion of their money back. So obviously I knew the United States was going to get involved and say, man, we're trying to get our money. That dude made a lot of money. Our American money went over there. We want it back. Now we all know how the U.S. is, you know, they're greedy about it. They want their cut. How come they ain't getting paid? These Mexican politicians are getting paid. The United States weren't getting paid. They were too busy just trying to crack down and bust these dudes and confiscate whatever little, you know, drug bust they can across the United States. Off, you know, 50 pounds here, 100 pounds here, 700 pounds there. Yeah, we small busts, but these guys are going to produce that in a day and they're going to send it by the ton a day. So that $14 million meant a lot to the United States if he's convicted and transferred to New York. If he goes to New York, he has to pay $14 billion. I don't know how he's going to do that. Like, you ain't got nothing else to lose. You're already arrested. I mean, that 23-hour lockdown, like El Chapo is going to have you crying too, just like he'll probably have his sons crying. That's why they're making deals. Um, they don't, they're not built for a, a little sell like some people. So maybe he might work a deal, but his lawyer's pressing the issue, trying to get him tried in the state of Texas. That way he doesn't get transferred to New York and have to relinquish $14 billion to the United States. Because in the Texas indictment, they're not asking for that. They're just trying to convict them for everything they did. So maybe Texas law is different. Maybe Texas mentality, the Texas culture is different. They're like, man, we'll give a damn about that money. We're Texas. We're rich already. We have our own law. We want you busted. We want, we want to give you the maximum sentence of the law. We're going to throw the book at you. We'd rather you be in that cell rotting in hell than, you know, just than making deals. But it just seems like, you know, when it comes to law, law enforcement, I'm going to say the DEA, CIA, FBI. Yes, they're the law. They're going to hold people accountable to the law. That's their job. They want to track down drug dealers, drug traffickers, criminal organizations, criminals in itself. That's what they go to work for every day. But it's like they're going to bust people, have them turn just to bust more people. So like I said, a lot of people are infatuated and mesmerized, you know, with the idea of the cartel, what they do, what they're capable of, how rich they are, the amount of drugs they can, uh, they uh, create and they, they send over to the border. Yeah, it makes it seem powerful and dangerous. And yes, they are dangerous. So I'm not going to take that from them whatsoever, but they're dangerous in that country. They have members in this country. Maybe they do hits in this country every now and then, but it's different. It's funny how they're, they're cartel bosses over there, but the moment they get busted in the United States, they want to become Americans and make deals real fast. The culture and the mentality changes real fast when they get cuffs put on you. But overall, the guys in witness protection program, uh, you know how when it comes to witness protection program, they're going to you know bleed the man for information, but at least he ain't got to worry about the cops. At least he ain't got to worry about getting gunned down. And maybe, you know, El Chapo wrote a letter to the son saying... You know, work with the lawyer, make deal with the lawyer. He's pretty good. And all these brothers thus far, besides the one that hasn't got busted or has got busted and they don't want to relinquish the information, they're making deals. Now, I can't judge a dude because he made a deal to get his brother out of federal prison and his brother went to witness protection program. I don't know if that was part of the deal. I don't know if he maybe he bamboozled his own brother. He's like, hey, you got me out, but I'm gone, bro. I'm gone. I'm going to just keep all the money that I made and I'm good. I'm going to live a good life. But he made a deal to get his brother out of jail by turning in another drug lord. That's what drug lords do down there in Mexico. El Mayo turned in four people. Turned in four people and his son turned in a lot more people and testified on El Chapo. The drug lords, the kingpins down there, they'll point fingers and tell on each other, give up each other's organizations to get busted to further their own power. That's what they do. That's just a common practice. There ain't no such thing as a G-code in Mexico. That G-code California mentality is boo-boo. That's why gangs are just small street gangs and will never amount to be none but street gangs because, hey, snitching is forbidden in California. But the same people that be their plug in the state of California, they're telling on each other left and right. But, yeah, you're still scared of them when they approach you with all those guns, with that jewelry, with all those you know fancy rides. Oh, they're powerful people now. You're scared of them now, but go across that border and see how scandalous they really are. Don't think for one second they won't turn you guys in neither if it means to save themselves. So El Mayo did it to four people and he got away with it. They did it to him. He makes a complaint about it, why he was kidnapped and that's not cool. And, and you know, he makes his cry to the Mexican officials that, hey, man, they kidnapped me. They, they extradited me unwillingly. That violates all kind of border laws and international laws or whatever laws you want to call them. They made a big deal about that as well. But I'll end the video on this note. 
giving you guys all this information. These guys get busted and don't want to face repercussions whatsoever at all. Al Chapo did. He faced the repercussions. He got blamed for a lot, and he's sitting in that cell. The same way he's sitting in that cell, a lot of these guys should be sitting in that cell. Am I right or am I wrong? There's zero accountability for these guys because these guys will call so many heads, get so many people slaughtered, kill people, kill a busload of people for no reason or for small stupid stuff. How many kids are dying out there? How many women are getting violated out there? How many Mexican pit politicians have been threatened and blackmailed? These guys get away with so much crime. So much crime. Every cartel member has bodies and blood on their hands. People have died. People have suffered. People that aren't powerful, that are victims, that are scared, that live in fear every day of their lives. Go through that every day at the hands and the power and direction of these men across that border. But the moment the U.S. gets involved, busted these guys, there's zero accountability. The Chapitos are going to get deals so they ain't got to see jail time. So what is the point of investigating them and busting them? Just so you can get some information and go bust more people? Because every time you cut off the head of the snake, yeah, you're just going to cause more factions to become bigger. You're going to cause more factions to start to take over territory, kill more people, and innocent people are going to get more killed while the U.S. is too busy. Like, I'm going to work a deal with him to bust him, then I'm going to bust him, then to just try to bust him. So we're playing, we're playing with fire, gra- gathering all these few members that are heavyweights, you know, heavy hitters. In the meantime, we're going to stir the pot up. We're going to instigate all these situations because that's what the DEA and the CIA do. They'll instigate to cause a lot of infighting because it does slow down the power, but it doesn't dismantle the power. It just slows it down. It stops them from growing for a little while, but eventually there's so many cartel members waiting for their time to become the boss. They don't give a damn about what happens to the boss. They don't care if their boss dies. They don't care if their boss gets arrested. Once they're gone, other people are ready to fight for that power. And when new members come in with positions of power, it's a whole new war. It's a whole new genre of political games and drug wars that are going to take place. And a lot more people are going to get hurt. And the ones that caused all this fighting, caused all this violence in that country are sitting in witness protection, eating Cinnabons like, uh, was that, was that uh, better call Saul, dude? You know, they're having a great time. They were living good for a while. Now they're just going to live a normal life and work deals out and bust other people. So... You know, people get mad when I do cartel videos, but in reality, bro, like I said, they're nothing to fear in the United States. They're there, and that's just my personal opinion. They're powerful in their country, but you can see how powerless they become when they enter our country. They only come to this country to traffic drugs and make money. The level of violence that goes on in Mexico, you're not going to see it in the United States. Every now and then a shooting and, you know, internal wars with two different factions might take place in like Los Angeles, San Diego. Some know the California cities, maybe Idaho, you know, wherever they traffic their drugs. But that's between them because their primary focus is money and trafficking drugs. The zero accountability is these guys can get away with a lot. And the first thing that they do when they them cuffs get put on is like, I'm about to make a deal, bro. I'm about to make, I'll be damned if I end up like Al Chapo in that cell. I'll be damned if I live my life like hell. So... They're willing to work a deal. Crazy story, right? So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this. Try, let's get it done. Peace.